So now you understand top-down analysis and you understand bump analysis. Are those the best approaches you want to take with customers? It really depends on the customer itself. But one of the more successful approaches is to combine both of those two and what we call the hybrid approach. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about the hybrid approach that you can use today to make your wool mining efforts successful. Stay tuned. Hey folks, it's Andrew here at All Things I Am. So let me give you a quick recap if you've missed my earlier videos. So a top-down analysis is where you talk to the customers and you don't have access to the data. So the best approach you wanna take is you wanna do some interviews with the customer, maybe a department itself, and make sure you understand what are their steps when they want to grant access to somebody, if it's a new person or somebody who transfers into their, their department. Then what you want to do is after you do job interviews, you do job shadowing, you meet with the customers to say, this is what I found. Does this make sense? The bump analysis is where you maybe don't have those interviews, but you have access to customer data. So what you're going to do then is you'll go into like a database, for example, and you'll verify everything that they see and have told you. And what you like to do is you want to piece that puzzle together. So you might take different database tables using a ERD diagram to make sure that the relationships are accurate. And then you paint your picture there. In both my earlier videos, I talked about the challenges between both the top-down and bop analysis. So one of the best approaches that we like to do is to combine both efforts and what we like to call the hybrid approach. So the way you would do the hybrid approach is you would do your interview stakes first. So you would meet with the SME or you would take a certain department, let's say the accounting department, and you'll make sure that you understand their processes today of how a new person, when they are hired, let's say a new accountant, where are the access they're granted today. And you'll take that information and you'll go look at their database and you'll verify, is that accurate? So one good example of using a hybrid approach is you talk to somebody from the accounting team and let's say a brand new hire, regardless of who they are, gets access to QuickBooks Online. So you understand that a new hire, regardless of their position, will come into the department and that everybody gets QuickBooks Pro Online. So you take that information, you'll go log into the database in the back end using their ERD diagram to just verify that you piece the different puzzles together you might have to use SQL to combine those tables because not all databases are created equally. And sometimes you have to go and pick and pick and choose from different places to bring them all together to form a whole you know, scenario of a user account. So you can go and verify using the users, the attributes that are maybe listed, maybe the job title too, and then saying, okay, what are the applications? And what's the access they have today? And in our example, again, I can say, well, like, like John Smith, he got hired you know, yesterday, he lives in DC. And then I go verify, oh yeah, he has access to this application, which is um, on, on QuickBooks Online. Pick somebody else, same process. And then the best part of all is take an existing some person, maybe a manager, maybe somebody who's been there and verify, do they also have access to that? And then just, and you would take both those and you would combine those to make sure that you have the right picture. So what you've done now is you, you've taken a, the interview process, you've talked to your customers, you've understood what they said, they've given you the whole process outline, you said, great, thank you so much for that. You take exactly what you've learned from top-down analysis, go into the data itself and make sure that that holds water. If you find some discrepancies, this is where you would come have great time conversation with the customer to make sure, wait a minute, you told me that this is the process today, but I'm noticing that the access is different can you help me that or help, help, help me understand that? And that's where you have great conversations with customers to make sure that what they're saying is correct. Because to be honest, sometimes you'll have it where managers really don't know what really happens in the front end. They'll just say, yeah, I go into a service now. I pick and choose the different access they want. I submit, it gets approved and it's, it's done. The only thing I care about is being told by the IT team or the IM team or whatever team that this person has access. And I'll go tell that, I'll go ask that person, hey, do you have access to this now? And they might not, not understand the whole backend process where you would go in and see the data itself. You might see a whole, totally different type of steps. 
And this is a, a good opportunity to say, hey, how come these processes are different or why is it so complex? So you're almost doing two birds with one stone is you're looking to identify ways to create roles to make sure that makes sense across the board. But maybe um, on the side of it, you might find that the process is really complex or it shouldn't be. And so you have an opportunity to maybe refine that process today, seeing the backend data. When you combine both top down and bottom up, you repeat the exercise for every department. And then you would take again the 80-20 rule because not everything is, is equal. So you wanna make sure when you look at the data itself, combining both top down and bottom up, that you come up with a great 80%. So if 80% of people create QuickBooks Pro uh, online, excuse me, but maybe 20% do not, you would just have a conversation saying, look, I noticed that these certain people don't have access to it, but should they? Is, it, is there a harm to giving the secretary of department access to QuickBooks Pro? Is there any problems with that? And there may be a conversation where, oh yeah, you know what? I can grant access to that. And maybe within QuickBooks Pro itself, I can restrict access today where only a secretary can, can have like read only rights, for example, versus them just not having access at all and making the process much more harder. Because again, remember, our back, our goal is to automate the process that the majority of the people get it, but not everybody. And that's why we call it coarse grain versus fine grain when it comes to access because it's all encompassing of the 80% rule. So when you do those conversations, that's where you would meet with the stakeholders to make sure they're, they make sense for them and to come up and talk about opportunities and talk about you know conversations, talk about you know compromise. That's the best way. And the biggest thing of all, that you're communicating to make sure that everybody's on page. So the last thing I wanna to stress to you when you use the hybrid approach is don't do it enterprise-wise. You can't, there is no way that will work out. You want to have small wins and just use an error process. Take certain departments that you know that you understand their rules today, their business goals, their process today, hit those first. And then you just move on you know, to each, 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 each and every department. Because the problem is in enterprise is every department think, does things differently. They all don't always have to do the same process today. So you might know whatever roadblocks you're gonna hit. And if you come to a customer saying, hey, I can do your enterprise wide in eight months, it's pretty aggressive when you don't know the full landscape of all the different politics might happen. They have different, maybe certain departments have different goals for business process and they might push back. So take them in chunks, get those wins under your belt and then move on to each and other department. That, that way also, one last thing with that too, is you can see what's going on. You can refine it too. You can say one department, we do RBAC this way, maybe in another way, we do it a different way. And then you kind of refine the process as you move on and on and on to every department. I talked earlier about this in my last video for the Bob analysis. And if you missed that, I'll link it here so you can kind of watch that. Is I talked about that every business, there's so much complexity in all business today. The landscape is just ever, ever, ever changing. So keep in mind that some businesses, this RBAC approach might not work at all. You might have to do combinations of RBAC, ABAC, which is attribute based asset control, future video, and even PBAC, another future video, which is policy-based asset control, where you might have to combine all three of those efforts to get the most accurate or the most easiest to find roles for your customers. And with everything going on and people going to the cloud, it's going to be ever more um, essential for you to really understand those approaches. So when you come and talk to customers, you can identify what is the best approach for them. If you want to listen to some experts talks about RBAC, I have an amazing podcast where one of my former colleagues, Helio Gomez, talks, talks with two great guys, Jim and Jeff, and they talk about identity. And in the episode, which I'll link down below, they talk about RBAC and the different approaches and how you want to start your RBAC program for a new customer. So definitely take a look at that. There are three great guys. I was blessed to work with Helio, smart guy. So definitely listen, listen to that podcast if you're interested more about our back, different approaches to how what you can learn from those nuggets to using your efforts with your customers in terms of helping define roles for that organization. All right, that, that's all I have in terms of the RBAC methodology and the different approaches. So we talked about top-down analysis, a bomb analysis, and then combine the two together to make the hybrid approach. And I'm so excited to bring you guys this content. And I really hope something that really helps you understand what it is that we as I am people do in terms, and then how, how hard is in terms of our back and the role-based ask control and the different methodologies. So if you liked everything that, that you heard, definitely give me a thumbs up. I would love that. I, I, I can't wait to make more videos for everybody. If you have any questions or tips or even your own you know, stories about our back, 
leave them in the comments below. I would love to read them and respond to you because, hey, we're all learning and I would love to learn more about different scenarios um, because, again, every customer is so unique. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more future videos. And as always, stay curious because you never know. I'll see you soon.